well, good morning. You join me here at the famous Welford Pools in the heart of the Cotswold Water Park, one of my favourite places to come fishing. I haven't actually been here in a few years, but we're here now. We've got a couple of nights ahead of us and we're going to do everything to try and catch some lovely scaly Cotswold carp. It's seven o'clock in the morning. I've got my bucket of bait. I'm going to do a couple of laps and see if we can find a few fish, maybe trickle a bit of bait into a few margin spots. It's going to be warm, the sun is on its way and we'll be with us shortly. And yeah, it's looking like it's going to be a good day ahead. Let's do it. So the makeup of this lake is basically split into sort of two main bodies of water connected by via a channel which makes kind of like an out of bounds area. And uh, the bailiff yesterday said to me it's worth coming along to where the ladder is which is just there and keeping an eye on this area because it's an area they love. So it's definitely worth a handful of pellet and a bit of flake I think and we'll come and check on it later on. This swim, swim number 13 I believe, is a swim that Ollie, the bailiff, he told me about. He said it's a good area for a daytime bite. The reason being there's a lovely snaggy margin opposite us there and a pump, aerator, um, slightly shallower. And if the sun gets up, they tend to spend a little, quite a bit of time here during the, during the day. So I think this could be my first, first port of call, at least for a couple of hours. Um, if I don't see anything else that is, the remaining lap round. Um, it looks good. You can walk round and bait up. It screams bushwhacker baiting pole. Um, yeah, I think it's a good shout. My decision has been made. The barrel is loaded and I'm heading back around to swim number 13. Uh, it just looks too good to ignore. I'm going to give it a couple of hours. I'm just going to fish off the barrow, a couple of rods in the snaggy margin and uh, see how it goes from there really. Steve was saying that a few fish have been caught on the maggots over the last few weeks and over the winter. Plus they're a big fan of the scope at squid in here, so I'm told, so it'd be silly not to combine the two. I'm only going to fish for a bite, I'm not going to put much out at all. Just a little uh, fluoro link, 15mm squid wafter. No need for a pop-up really there. Bottom's clean as far as I'm aware. Give that a go, I think. As I mentioned, I'm only trying to get a bite here. The fish are here, then I'm guessing we could get a bite pretty quickly. So I'm only going to go in with a tiny little bit, handful of maggots because I know they love them on here. Handful of maggots, a little bit of pellet. The water's coloured, so I want to add a bit of scent. The pellet, the squid pellet, will do that perfectly. And then a tiny little bit of squid flake. Probably enough to be honest. Yeah, it's 
get him out there. Giving it a couple of hours down in this corner and uh, nothing's, nothing's happened. It did look good first thing this morning when I first got around there. Uh, but since then we've lost the sun, it's got very overcast and the wind's picked up and it's just, it's chilly, you know, sitting on the end of it, it's not very nice at all, not very comfortable. Um, and I've just been for a walk around the other side whilst the cameraman watched my rods. And although I didn't see any signs of fish as such, it just feels much better much more comfortable and if I was a carp I think that's where I'd be so I'm going to reel the rods in get around there and uh, we're quite lucky that the, the lake's quite quiet today so we've got a bit of choice with regards to swim so we might as well take advantage of it so I'm going to get around there give it a few hours and uh, see what happens I wish I could say I found this spot myself, but Ollie told me about it. Thankfully, there's no one in the swim to my right, so it allows me to sort of cut across to the margin. There's a nice little strip of gravel out there. I've just had a little cast around with the lead, found it quite easily. He says it's good for a daytime bite, or just, it's just good for a bite. So I'd be silly to ignore it, really. Perfect little spot. Same tactic, same rig, nothing's going to change. Confident in that. Just need to get on the fish. Definitely warm around here though, it feels a lot better. I'm already happier. We just need a car. Just like that, my first day here at Welford Pools has come to an end. I feel like I've worked relentlessly today. It's been non-stop, the day's flown by. But unfortunately, I've got very little to show for my efforts. I don't think I could have done much more, to be honest with you. I kept walking and walking, baited a few different spots, ended up fishing three or four different swims. And I may have had half an opportunity just this afternoon in the channel, but 
uh, nothing come to fruition. However, uh, I'm feeling confident tonight going into the first night. My two rods are out there. Uh, I'm really happy with them. I listened to Ollie the Bailiff's advice in regards to spots. And um, just a couple of minutes ago, in fact, I've had a savage liner on the right hand rod, which is fishing to a sort of a snaggy margin to my right. And it looks good, you know. Uh, it's done a few fish in the past, not long ago. Um, yeah, and it's a good sign. We're going into the going into the evening full of confidence. And if I don't get a bite during the night, I'm pretty confident of getting one in the early hours of the morning. Fingers crossed. Well, it hasn't taken long. I did say the right hand rod would be the one. And it is. It's only been out there a couple of hours. It's not been dark for long. And we've had the bite. And he's nearly ready for netting. And here she is, my first Welford Pool carp of the session. By no means the biggest in the lake, but an absolute beautiful carp nonetheless it's only early as well i've managed to get the rod back out on the spot i've baited up again and i've got a really good feeling this is not the only one that's going to come tonight let's get her back and hope for more for the night ahead After last night's 18 pounder, I got the rods back out, but unfortunately, nothing else happened during the night. However, I was hearing them out in the middle. And then just on first light, the other rod this time, the left hander, pulled up tight. And not only have I managed to land another Welford carp, but it's one of its biggest residents at over 30 pounds. Unfortunately, it didn't put up much of a fight. And by the time I could get the cameraman's attention, wake him up, it was pretty much in the net. However, nonetheless, at just over 30 pounds, I'm absolutely made up. So I've just slipped back that 30 pound art and that has rounded off what has been a challenging but very rewarding 24 hours. If you would have said to me yesterday you would have come here and had two fish, an 18 pounder and a 30 pounder, um, I'd have ripped your hand off. So we still have 24 hours at our disposal. The plan was to stay here and fish here for the duration of our session. However, Steve the owner has just come over and put an offer on the table that I can't possibly refuse. Bramblemere, which he also owns, is just across the road. There's no one booked on it at the moment. And he said, if you want to go and have a go over there for a night, you are more than welcome. Bramblemere is a venue very close to my heart. I've been there a few times in the past. I've done a bit of filming there, in fact. And um, it's an incredible lake full of incredible carp. And that is an offer that I'm not going to turn down. Thankfully, I've also got the 12 foot X series in the van. So I'm going to switch over. I'll put the 10 footers away, get the 12 footers out and uh, not really sure the plan of attack. I'm going to head over there, see if we can't find some. Judging from past experience, um, Bramble involves a little bit of casting, nothing, nothing too extreme. Maybe a few solid bags here and there, maybe even give them a bit of bait, because I'm sure if they're anything like these carp, they're going to be hungry. So we're going to get packed up now, get the gear in the van, and make the short journey over the road.
we have made the short journey across the road and we are now walking around Bramble Mere. When Steve came to see us yesterday and presented us with the opportunity to come on here for 24 hours, I was never going to say no. I have fished here a couple of times in the past, but my knowledge isn't really that great here. However, we've got Curly, Ollie, Steve, they've all given me a bit of advice and sort of pointed out a likely few looking areas. Um, so we've got something to go on. However, I'm going to continue my walk now, get back to the van, decide on a swim, plot up for the night, and hopefully catch ourselves another calf or two. I'm sitting here in uh, a swim called Party Point. Um, as the name suggests, it's a point area that covers a large percentage of water. I was just sitting here with Curly. He was pointing out a few sort of areas, a few spots, and lo and behold, one has jumped out right in front of us. So, I think that's my decision made. I've not seen any anywhere else. It was an area I favoured anyway, just because it covers so much water. And um, I'm all excited again. So I'm gonna go get the gear out of the van, get round here, and uh, get fishing. seen a fur bar, three shows, all within the same sort of vicinity as the first one. Um, I've marked it up with a tree on the far margin, so I know the rough area. And for the next few hours, I plan on just putting a couple of my trusty single hook baits out there, just see if we can sort of nick a quick bite, you know, while I get everything set up. And if that doesn't prove successful, I'm gonna spend a bit of time and finding, a bit of, finding an actual spot out there, you know. The weather is just cock on it, it's getting better by the minute. Um, we've seen the fish show and it just feels like it's going to do some bites, you know. So I'm going to introduce, I'm going to commit. It's not something I'd normally do, but I'm going to commit and introduce a little bit of bait. So I'm going to try and find a nice sort of area, comfortable distance, get the old dot spot rod out and uh, give them a bit of bait tonight, like all or nothing, you know. But for now, I'm going to get this out there on the spot as well. I've already got one out there. Probably going to put all three of them, one on white, one on yellow, one on pink maybe. Um, see which one does the bite. A couple of hours have passed now and unfortunately the single hook baits haven't produced a bite. Um, we're getting well into the afternoon now so it's time to start thinking about a spot for the night ahead. Thankfully, I've got on the phone to Mike Wilson. He's fished in this swim a couple of times before and he's put me on an absolute beauty of a spot. Nice bit of gravel at 16 wraps. Managed to find it with no problems at all. Oh, that's it. I'm gonna put a nice little mix together. Um, wait till the wind calms down, get the spot rod out and get it out there. Couple of rods on that for the night and then with a third rod, um, who knows, I'm going to wait and see. See if they show on dark, maybe cast a solid bag at them, single hook bait, we'll see a bit later on. Bait wise, I'm going to basically use whatever I've got left. Um, I've still got some maggot, I've told, I'm told they like the maggots on here. Bit of squid pellet, bit of flake and maybe a few 15 millers. Um, can't go wrong really. Yeah, so that's the plan. Gonna get some fresh leaders on, some fresh rigs, everything perfect for when this wind calms down and uh, get everything out there absolutely on the money.
That is all three rods out for the night. I've decided in the end to put them all on the same spot, all on the baited patch, all or nothing really. I thought we saw a few earlier in the vicinity, found, managed to find that lovely gravel spot and uh, I thought I'd go all out and the chance that shoulder fish come over them, one, two, maybe all three of them would go, I'm like wishful thinking and all. Um, don't get me wrong though, if I start seeing them after dark or hearing them, sorry, then I'll have no qualms about reeling them on in and casting to them. But for now, I'm going to put them all on the spot and uh, yeah, see what happens throughout the night. It's, it's the first time I've had rods out, to be honest, all day. Barley, a couple of singles that I chucked out earlier. Uh, I spent a lot of, day, lot of the day finding the spot, walking around, just prepping fresh rigs, fresh leaders, everything, just to get it bang on, because we've only got one chance at this, one night. Yeah, and that's all I can really do now. Um, I'm going to get the bivvy up, everything's a bit of a mess. So I'm going to get everything tidied up, get the bivvy up, get a bit of food on, chill with the boys and uh, hopefully start seeing a few fish show very soon. Good morning from Bramble Mere on our final morning here in the Cotswolds um, and what a beautiful morning it looks like it's going to be. The sun is just coming up, um, I've got my tea, it's beautifully flat, flat calm and it looks like it's going to be a very warm day again and it's an even better morning because in the early hours of it we managed to get a bite and in the sack over there I've got a lovely Bramble Mere scaly just over 23 pounds, I believe. And um, it's an absolute crack art. The exact reason we chose to come over the road and have a go on here. I got the bite in the early hours, like I said. Um, it was the middle rod, actually, the three. I got three on a spot. And uh, caused a bit of carnage getting him in, wiped out one of the other rods, but we got the fish sorted. Steve's kindly let us retain the fish for filming purposes. Um, so I got the two rods back out last night. It wasn't easy in the dark, as expected. Put a bit more bait over the top, um, and I was happy with them, I guess. But uh, this morning when I woke up, I had a look at the lines, and they were pointing a little bit left off the spot. So although it's um, not something I'd normally do, I reeled them both in and reclipped them up and recast them out at sort of 6.30 this morning. Prime bite time, I know, but I wanted to get them bang on, ready for the sort of the morning period. Now they're all settled, I'm going to give that sun another hour or so to come up, get the fish out, do some video and photos, and then see what the day brings really. We're heading home today obviously, so I'm going to be slowly, it's a slow pack up uh, this afternoon. But like I said, it looks like it's going to be an incredible day, beautiful. And although the locals have told me that they don't really like zigs in here, um, I don't believe that for one minute to be honest. So. The way things are going, if I start seeing a few more, I have seen a couple this morning actually, just to the right of my baited area, so it's looking good. So I might give it a few hours and then think about chucking a few zigs around for the remainder of the day before we head home. We'll see, we'll see how the morning pans out. Here she is, 
23 pound of lovely scaly Cotswold carp. This is exactly the reason we come to the Cotswolds and Bramblemere in particular. This one was nailed in the early hours, like I said. Scrope it squid waft, I tip with a few maggots. The middle rod of the three on the baited spot. Yeah, what an incredible carp to catch. If I don't catch another one today for the remainder of the session, then I'm not too bothered because this has absolutely made what has been an incredible trip. However, I'm not going to give up. We've still got a few hours left, so there's every chance of another one. Let's get him back. The rig I've been using for the majority of the year so far and the one that's caught me all my fish so far on this session is a rig that most would refer to as the Fluoro D rig. It is in fact however I tie it slightly different as opposed to the whipping knot which most use I find that a bit difficult to be honest with you so instead I use a section of shrink tubing, pin the material to the hook, uh, it stops any slipping on the cast you know when the whipping knot sometimes may slip uh, and it's just a hell of a lot easier to be honest with you. The reason why I opt to a fluoro stiff link for the majority of situations, if it permits, is um, three reasons really. One, it's next on impossible to tangle on the cast. Two, the rig will reset itself should it get picked up by a bird or something. And three, and the most important one of all for me, is that when a carp does pick it up, because of its stiff properties, the carp finds it near on impossible to eject. Hook bait wise, I've been flitting between a 15mm Scopex squid wafter and one of our cultured hook baits, both of which I'm tipping with a nice big ball of maggots which complement the loose feed that I've been feeding. And to complement the rig, I've been using one of our new fused leaders. This is the helicopter setup, the black silk version. However, over at Welford, I was also using the clear one with a leg clip setup. They're just easy, you know, straight out of the pack, I'll give it a quick steam on the kettle, add a bit of putty to ensure it sinks on the bottom and they're good to go. Although I did initially say when I was holding up that 23 pounder that I was happy, an opportunity has presented itself. Basically the main rods on the baited spot are dead. I've not seen anything on it all morning. Um, however, down in the corner to my right, or as uh, my left as I'm looking right now, I've seen three now. Three bosh out this morning, right in the corner. Looks, what, 20 yards out. It's where the wind's slowly trickling in. We've got a couple of hours to go. Um, so I'll be silly not to go and have a go. So I'm gonna reel the 12 footers in now. They're gonna go back in the rod skins because I don't need them for the rest of this session. I've got a 10 footer out that I was using over Welford yesterday. Um, because like I say, it's only gonna be a 20 yard, almost an under the run flick. Um, and these are perfectly suited for it. Single pop up, single rod. I'm going to give it the last few hours, and who knows? I might just be able to make this session even better.
big, and that is scaly. I cannot quite believe what has happened here, but the plan has come good, and it hasn't taken long at all. Not only have I managed to get another bite, um, I've managed to get one within about, I don't know, 15 minutes of putting the rod out, and I've got another bramble mere scaly. If there is one thing that you take from this video, it should be that always, always, always react on what you see. Yes, I had three rods out on a baited spot that I took a whole afternoon preparing yesterday, but they were in in a second. As soon as I saw that there were a couple of fish down in the bay, I reeled them in, got my single 10 footer, and I was down here. Sometimes it, all it takes is a single hook bait in the right place. I'm gonna go and get the mat, get the scales and get this one out because we've got a really special one here. Uh, I'm lost for words to be honest, I don't know what to say. I couldn't have dreamt a better way to end our stay here in the Cotswolds. I've absolutely loved every second of it. 28 and a half pounds of original Bramble Mirror Mirror. Thank you beautiful, what a cup. <laughs>